Hello, and welcome to episode 13 of the How to Make Any Game Mechanics series. If you're new around here, in each and every episode, we randomly choose a viewer's game mechanic suggestion, and I just try and create it in real time. As a disclaimer, because everything is done in real time, it may not be the greatest method to create this mechanic, so take everything you see here with a grain of salt. With that being said, if you're following along and run into any hiccups along the way, there is a link to the GitHub for this project in the description box below which contains each and every episode. For this Discord special episode, to show appreciation to our wonderful Discord community, I reached out and asked you guys for your game mechanic suggestions. I know some of you have been here since the beginning of the channel, and I just can't stress enough how much I appreciate you taking this game dev journey with me to nearly 5,000 subscribers. So after adding all of your suggestions to a separate wheel and giving it a spin, today's suggestion comes from Aimbot, who suggested in-game crosshair. Not as detailed as some suggestions, but not a problem. So now that we have our suggestion, let's head on over to Unity. Inside of Unity, I created a new folder called Episode 13 Crosshair and a new Episode 13 Scene. We are now inside this blank scene, and we can start creating our crosshair. Aimbot wasn't exactly specific on what type of crosshair to be creating, whether it be a 2D or 3D crosshair. I feel like a 3D crosshair is just a little bit too easy, as it's just an image on a canvas stuck in place. So let's go with the 2D counterpart. So for the 2D counterpart, we should be moving our cursor around the scene, and the crosshair should follow similar to what you'll see in some sort of a bullet hell or some of my other projects that you might have seen on this channel. So to start with our 2D crosshair, we're going to need a sprite. I'm just going to go over to my second monitor and I'm going to drag a crosshair sprite into the projects folder. So crosshair dragged in and this is what it looks like. It's just a square with a few little marks that look like a crosshair. I'm going to go ahead and change my pixels per unit to 64 and change my filter mode to point no filter. I'm also just going to make sure there's no compression going on as this is a pretty small pixel art crosshair, so we don't want it to look blurry. The next thing we can do is we can go ahead and create a blank object and I'm just going to name this to cursor and then I'm going to reset the transform. So it's just in the center of our scene. I'm then going to take our crosshair and just drag it as a child of our cursor. The reason I dragged it as a child of the cursor and I'm not doing it on the main crosshair object itself is because later on down the line, we can change what this crosshair visual looks like by just having a few different options and then just enabling the ones we want. So whether you want your crosshair to look a little bit different or maybe even a cursor when you're hovering over UI, this will just make it a quick and easy way to add those features. So now that we have a sprite for our crosshair and we have our cursor object, let's go ahead and in our projects folder, let's create a new crosshair script. So I'm just going to call it crosshair. And we can go ahead and we might as well just add that onto our cursor main object. So I'm just going to drag and drop the script onto our cursor object. And now that it's on our object, we can feel free to open that up in VS Code. So I am inside VS Code, and the very first thing I'm going to do is just disable our cursor when we're in game. We're going to have our own crosshair, which is the point of this episode, so we're not going to want the cursor to be shown. So inside our start method, I'm just going to say cursor dot visible equals false. We can then move on to update as that's where we're going to be updating the position of our crosshair. So in order to get the position of our mouse, we're going to actually have to turn it into world space coordinates. And because this is 2D and our camera might give us some sort of Z position, we're going to have to manually create a variable and remove the Z position from it. Then we can feel free to change our crosshair's position. I know that's a long-winded explanation, but it'll all make sense once we start going. So let's make a new vector3, and this is just going to be a temporary variable. We can just call it cursor pause, and it's going to be equal to input.mouse position. And again, we're going to have to convert this mouse position into a world space coordinate. So what we're going to do is we're going to say cursor pause is now equal to camera dot main. So just the main camera and then just dot screen to world point. 
And then inside the brackets, we're just going to put in our cursor pause. So this will effectively just change our input.mess position into a world position we can actually use. And from here, we're just going to want to make sure that that Z position is equal to zero. And that's because we're using 2D. So let's go ahead and just say cursor pause dot Z is equal to zero. And now that all of our building blocks are in place and we have the position we want our crosshair to be, we can go ahead and set the position. So the transform dot position is going to be equal to cursor pause. We can then save this up and let's head back into Unity. So back in Unity, let's go ahead and let's hit play. So I hit play and if I just click in the game view, my cursor disappears and we have a crosshair that follows along with my mouse. This would be a very, very short episode. So let's go ahead and let's actually do something with our crosshair. I'm going to hit escape so I can see my mouse again. And then I'm just going to come up and uncheck play. So in a real game scenario, you might want your character to face towards this crosshair. I've done similar things in the 2D leveling system, which I'll just put on screen now. And as you can see, the crosshair is over to the right and the character faces right. And when it goes to the left, the character faces left. We're going to go ahead and just recreate that exact same thing. But first things first, let's change this nasty background blue color. Let's click on our main camera, change the background type from skybox to solid color. And I'm just going to change it to a gray color. This is just a little bit more easy on the eyes and that background color just drives me crazy. So with that change, I'm going to head over to the scene view and I'm going to click on our episode 10 folder. Inside, all I really care about is just this main character sprite. I'm just going to drag and drop that into our scene. So just like so, and then go back to our episode 13 folder. And this is going to be a player. We can go ahead and make a new 2D sprite. And I'm just going to make a square. And this will act as our ground. So let's make a box layer 2D. Let's set the layer to ground. Reset the transform. Scale it up. And move it into place. We can then go ahead and create our player. So let's make an empty object. And I'm just going to call it player. We can reset that transform. And I'm going to drag the MC sprite to be a child of our player. And then I'm just going to reset the transform so it's in the middle of that player object. I'm then going to click on the player and I'm going to add a box player 2D. And we can just kind of edit it into place. So something like that will be fine. And then we can add a rigid body. And then we can add a player controller. And this player controller was created in the very first episode of the series. I'm going to use transform movement and set the move speed to three. And now the player should fall and be able to move around on the ground. So let's go ahead and let's hit play. So the character has fallen to the ground and I can move left and right with the A and D keys. And this crosshair does nothing to the game whatsoever. I'm going to then go ahead and hit escape and exit out of play. So realistically, making the player follow the crosshair is probably best done in the player controller. But because of the style of this series, it'd be a better idea for us if we make a new script and make it all happen inside of there. So I'm going to make a new script and I'm going to call it something like, I don't know, face crosshair. I'm then going to click on the player, scroll down and add that script to the player. We can then open that script up in VS Code. I am inside VS Code and to make the player face the crosshair, let's go ahead and we're going to be using our scale for the player to make him face left or right. If you're familiar with other episodes from the series, you're familiar with this exact process. So the first thing we're probably going to need is some reference to our crosshair. So let's make a serialized field and let's make a private and let's make a transform and we can just call it crosshair. We can then make another private variable and let's just make a scale variable. So private vector three and let's just say scale. This scale variable is just going to be keeping track of our default scale. So inside of start, let's assign that now. So scale equals 
game object dot transform dot local scale. So whatever game object this script's attached to is scale. We can then go ahead and just scoot on over to update and inside of update, we're just going to do a little bit of a check. We're going to check if the crosshair is to the left or right of the player. So let's start by making an if statement. And inside the brackets, we're going to say crosshair dot position dot x is greater than transform dot position dot x. So basically, this is just checking if the crosshair is to the right of the player. So let's go back into Unity and let's just go over the explanation just one more time. So back in Unity, if our crosshair is to the right of the player, the player is going to be facing the crosshair by default. So we actually won't be changing the scale whatsoever. But if we were to move our crosshair to the left of the player, the player should flip and look at the crosshair. And we're going to be doing this by changing the player's scale and we're going to just be inverting it to negative. So that's exactly what's going to happen. Instead of one, it's just going to be negative one. So let's go ahead and let's head back into our script and make it all happen. So back in our script, if you remember, this is just checking if the crosshair is to the right of the player. So if it is, we're going to just keep everything the exact same. So gameObject.transform.localScale is just going to be equal to the scale value we set by default, which would just be 1, 1, 1. We can then make an else statement, so else. And inside, we're going to say gameObject.transform.localScale is going to be equal to a new vector3. And inside the brackets, we're going to be able to edit the scale. So we're going to say negative scale.x scale.y and scale.z. So now the one will become a negative one if the crosshair is on the left hand side of our player. Let's go ahead and let's save this up and let's head back into Unity. So back in Unity, let's scroll down on our player and let's assign this crosshair variable. So I'm just going to drag our main cursor object into the crosshair slot. We can then hit play and our character falls, and he is looking toward the crosshair, and if I move the crosshair to the left, the player faces to the left. We can then move it right back to the right, and you can see he flips back. We can still walk around and do everything as normal, but he will always face towards the crosshair. This would be really good if you intend on shooting something towards the crosshair, or even if you're just swinging a sword. But that's all the time we have for this episode. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And who knows, maybe the next episode will be your game mechanic suggestion. Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure you join the Discord if you're interested. And I'll see you guys next time.